You're listening to Happy Healthy Hormones with Dr. Chris. Are you tired of the short-term patch to your health problems? Is avoiding medications and surgeries important to you? If you answered yes, then your prayers have been answered. Dr. Chris has been helping people transform their health for over a decade. He's a world-renowned health expert who specializes in holistic health. He's a professional speaker, chiropractor, and international best-selling author. It's his mission to help you reach your full God-given potential through holistic health and healing. Get ready to be inspired and transformed. Here's your host, Dr. Chris. Hello and welcome to the show where disease takes a dive and people come to thrive. Hey, it's a pleasure to come to you all today. Uh, I am excited to help you out in your journey through weaving around all the crazy health myths that are out there. And so today, I want to help you understand what you're putting into your body, what you're putting into your family's body, and what the food industry doesn't want you to know. Because when you walk into that grocery store, when you start to walk through those aisles, there are a plethora of different ways that the food industry tries to trick you into thinking that the food that you're going to grab off that shelf is healthy for you, that it's going to give you sustenance, that it's going to build a quality of health inside of your body. And 90% of the time, it is a flat out lie. But hey, you know what? If the food industry can put more bottom dollar to their stock shareholders, well then, hey, I guess everything's just fine for them, right? But where do you end up being 90 percent of americans food budget is spent on processed foods 90 percent now you might say well dr chris i don't spend 90 percent of my budget of food on uh, processed foods well if you don't someone else is and a lot of times there are things that you don't even realize are processed and are creating disease in your body in your food supply so Let's get into it because there are 3,000 food additives that are approved, approved, those are quotation, air quotations around that, approved for your intake. So I'm not going to go through all three of those. I'm not going to go through that at all. What I'm going to go into are the seven food industry tricks you can start to avoid today, your next grocery shopping trip that will help you get on track to where you want to be. Now, number one that we look at is looking at the label fresh or natural. Now, understand this. This is a term that's only meant to distinguish between meat and specifically poultry that has or hasn't been handled at a temperature below 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Example, what that means is it hasn't been frozen. That's all it means. So just because something says fresh or natural... Don't assume that it is good for your body because that chicken, that meat, is probably shot up with antibiotics, hormones, fed gmo food, is super toxic, super acidic, and you are not going to put that into your body and into your family. Not recommended. Now, the other thing we look at, too, in that same genre is also the label Farm Fresh. See it on the eggs, on the cheese, basically any animal product you can think of. But Farm Fresh doesn't mean in any way or indicate any matter whatsoever where the food was raised. For example, an egg from both a cramped, overpopulated cage chicken farm. I mean farm, it's not on a farm, on a grassy farm. I'm talking these are in basically barns, warehouses, right? They've never seen the light of day. Has never, ever stepped foot on a farm. And an egg from a chicken that's freely roaming around in a pasture eating worms and grubs and getting exercise and fresh air are both eggs that are labeled as fresh. So what does fresh really mean to you? Do you really want a food that has been cramped up, cooped up, not able to eat its natural foods and and nature that it's supposed to where it gets all its nutrients for you to eat or do you want to get that in just a man easy go-to meal that's just packaged up and is just man just crud for your body? So let's understand what that really under, really what that means. And only uh, official definition of natural, the only when it comes to uh, the USDA and, and food lab- labeling, which actually refers to 
again, meat and poultry, states that a food product or ingredient is all natural, air quotes again, or contains nothing artificial, or that it's not natural if it contains synthetic or artificial ingredients. So really understand what you're eating. What do you put into your body? One of the best ways, farmer's markets, I love those. You can actually talk to the farmer, understand where it's coming from. Now, all other packaged foods, uh, the FDA has not actually come up with a definition for the word natural, which allows companies the freedom to define it however they want. So, I mean, this is the free-for-all. The food industry is like the wild, wild west. Anything goes as long as you can find some kind of creative marketing way to get it out to the masses. So understand really fresh and natural probably don't really mean what you think it means. For instance, when you get produce in the marketplace, it's already at least a week old by the time it gets to your hands, already a week old. So immediately that food starts to lose its nutritional value the minute it's picked up from the earth. So what are you putting in your body? Are you really getting as good of nutrients as you think you are? Now, let's look at number two. Number two are whole grains. Everyone growing up, hey, eat the whole grain bread, whole grain this, the food pyramid, get all those good grains, 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 grains. You're getting a mostly refined product with just enough whole grains so that they can stick a label on it. What says whole grains on the side of that box or the side of that package is not whole grain. Now, it could be whole grains that really don't give you any health benefit. Take check cereal, for instance. The, quote, whole grain in this, that whole grain is whole grain corn, which we know is a GMO product and also full of pesticides. So whole grain really doesn't, mean a whole lot of anything. What you need to understand is if you're going to go with a whole grain, understand what kind of grains you're putting in your body. Is it wheat, rye, or barley that can create a lot of digestive issues and create a lot of uh, IBS and leaky gut and other problems with your health? Or is it something that hasn't been hybridized, something that hasn't been refined, something like a uh, quinoa, which is actually a seed. I mean, you can kind of go in the grain um, category? Is it a wild rice? Things that are organic, things that aren't GMO'd. Now those can be better for you, no question. And those are going to create a lot less problem in your life and are going to you know, create a lot less headaches for you down the road. But understand, don't get caught up in that whole grain mumbo jumbo. You can be the healthiest person in the world and never eat a single whole grain. Now the other one I want to look at too for you and help you understand too is the and this goes right hand in hand is number three the gluten free buzzword right or words however you want to say it but gluten free what does that really mean people a lot of times have come to the understanding from their own conclusion or from just marketing in general that hey if it says gluten free man this must be good for me it's a green light eat as much as I want of this <laughs> even though it is filled with sugar or it has other processed foods in it, or it has food additives and chemicals and preservatives. People just think it's gluten-free. And it's a buzzword. I mean, and the food industry knows this. So they put it on things that are the most obvious things, like on an apple, gluten-free. Well, yeah, no kidding, it's gluten-free. But they'll put it on anything just to try to get you to buy it and thinking that you'll think it's, hey, good for you, it's gluten-free, must be good to go. Here's the scary part, though. For people that really do have problems with gluten intolerance, just because it says gluten-free, that's only one aspect they need to look at when it comes to your health. Because when you have foods that are filled with other processed foods and they're not organic and they're highly processed or highly uh, just processed where they have so many additives in them that you can't even find the actual whole ingredients um, until it's piled underneath a bunch of other uh, ingredients that are man-made. So this will create a lot of confusion for people. Here's the deal. Gluten-free on the market and the shelves is highly processed. It contains large amounts of sugar, as well as plenty of those preservatives, artificial colors, and fillers too. So in other words, 
their junk food with gluten-free slapped on it across the front. Okay. So a good example of something that's gluten-free that might be good for you is actually just like the wild rice we talked about. Okay. So be really careful of that. A lot of snack foods will put gluten-free on those things. Uh, A lot of things that will, if you consume those, they will make you gain weight and that'll create a whole other host of problems for you, which we're trying to avoid, right? Now let's look at number four. Now this is a shame for this word because this marketing trick really, again, just like the gluten-free leads you down a road that you think you're okay, which is the word organic. Now organic gets slapped on a whole lot of very processed junk foods. It's straight up junk foods. Like I will see uh, packages of gummy bears that just say organic, like free to go. Hey, have as many of those as you want. But you look at the back of the ingredients and it has just as much sugar as anything else, which is really where the problem is. So made with organic, this, like, you know, you'll see your quotation marks or labeling to say, you know, made with organic ingredients or organic this. If it even just says made with organic ingredients, I can contain um, 70% or more certified organic ingredients. So it's not all organic. So be aware that there's a distinction between all organic and made with. Now, specific ingredients are not required to be organic in multi-ingredient foods. So it could say organic on the outside, but it's really not organic. Some examples include enzymes in your yogurt, pectin and fruit jams, baking soda and baked goods. So what does organic really mean? If you're really trying to be the purist and really trying to minimize your load of toxins, then you really want to do your research. You really want to look at the back of those products, what's really in them. It's the only way you can really know. And even then, it can be tricky. Now, there is a large number of synthetic substances allowed for use in both organic crop production and livestock production too. So I was really surprised by some of the list for livestock It included vaccinations as well as quite a number of pharmaceuticals. So just because on that packaged meat it says organic in the store, still have those vaccines, could still have pharmaceuticals going into that into that animal, and then you're going to ingest those things as well. So I know it's scary, but again, if you can know where your meat's coming from, if you can talk to the farmers, that's the best. Now, I know we can't always do that in our surroundings, and our situations. You just got to make the best choice you can. You know, I don't think you can't eat anything. But if you do have a choice between the organic meat, you're not really sure what went into it, or just the regular conventional meat, you're going to be better off going with the organic every time. But just the more you can refine that down, the more you can understand what you're putting into your body, the better off you're going to be. Now, here's the thing. They still do not guarantee that animals are grazing on pasture or free-roaming Uh, meats or eggs and things like that. So just because it says free range or it says, you know, pasture fed, you don't really know what that means. So for instance, free range could just mean that they have access. The animal has access, like for instance, with chickens, a 20 square foot area for all the chickens. There could be thousands of chickens in this chicken factory and they're all indoors and they have access, all of them, to this little spot. They're just so either diseased or used to being inside that they don't even bother to even go outside. So just be really aware of that too. I love pasture-raised animals, grass-fed animals all the way through. It will have some of the best taste. It will have the best uh, composition for your body so that when you eat it, your body can actually do the best things with it too. It will create health in your body and not disease. So just a little quick tip there, right? Now, number five, stay away from the trans fats. Now, the trick is, is that the food industry will put on there, no trans fats, no trans fats, big letters. You think you're doing good. Hey, you know what? I'm staying away from the trans fats. I know those are bad for me. Here's the catch. If the total amount of trans fat is less than 0.5 grams per serving, then the package and nutritional fact labels on the back stated the product contains zero grams of trans fat. So to 
avoid this process to, to be able to label their stuff trans fat because the food industry is smart. They know that consumers are wising up and that people want to have healthier options, but they got to make the food as cheap as they can. So, you know, they lobbied to get that rule made. And so now they can put actually trans fats and quite a few of trans fats in your food, but just the way that they label the serving size, get away with being able to label it. No trans fats. Pretty sickening, right? Now here's the other thing too. avoid anything with the words hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated oils or even shortening. These are all buzzwords for those trans fats. And you can look at those packages that have no trans fat on them and look at the back and find those types of oils and those types of fats in your food. So let's look at number six. So th- before we look at number six, you just understand that it is easy to get confused. I get it. We're going through a few different things here. Um, even if I go through all these, I guarantee there will still be some mistakes made. You'll come back from the grocery store and put stuff in your pantry or in your fridge and you will find that, oh, wait a second. I guess this wasn't what I thought it was or this is not the healthy option I thought I got. I mean, it even will still happen to my wife, right? She'll come home and she'll have all these groceries and like it'll all be organic and, you know, follow the same principles that we teach everyone on on these shows and, and there'll be like a package of veggies that was non-organic and it was because you know it was right next to the one that looked just like the other one and you know you, you grab it in a hurry or you know there's just little things that your body registers your mind registers and you think it's okay and you know it's not and so it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to forgive yourself it's just a matter of trying to make a change right trying to improve your health trying to do things differently because the more that you buy the, the natural, the healthy, the organic foods, the more the food industry will respond. But if you keep buying the same old crappy stuff that's killing your body on the inside, the food industry is going to continue to make more of those products and market you more for those things. Because the fact is, is the food industries follow the money, right? So if you have, so it's a simple supply and demand. It's like economics 101. If you demand more of the good stuff, they'll supply more of the good stuff. If you demand more of the crappy stuff, they'll give you more of the crappy stuff. That simple. Now, let's look at number six. Number six is labeled as naturally sweetened, avoid those, or sugar-free or reduced sugar. Any of those labels really want to have the the radar out, like, okay, what's going on here? Here's, here's the deal. It's advertised as being sweetened naturally, And yet a quick glance at the ingredients confirms that the second ingredient after water is still plain old white refined sugar. So be skeptical. Sweet naturally, sugar-free, anything that looks like it should be sweet and it's saying it's not, take a double take. 70% can be from refined sugar cane. 70%. So... Here's the deal. They can use all kinds of fancy, smancy sounding words like evaporated cane juice, okay, malodextrin. These are all just different names for sugar. Now, sugar will create disease faster than any other compound on earth. I mean, other than maybe, I don't know, um, what's the the compound that they use to make uh, radioactive and the radio reactors like plutonium or something like that, or uranium, like those compounds. Yes. Those will cause cancer faster. It's that or sugar. Which one do you want? I don't want either one if I can help it. So really understand where things are coming from. Malodextrin, anything that ends with O S E aspartame, sucralose, saccharin. These are all buzzwords that are going to like, should throw off the alarms and the sirens that you should say, run away from that food, run away from that food as much as you can, because it will create havoc in your body. A lot of times we get into those, those thought trains where we think, Hey, you know what? It's not that big a deal. It's only a little bit everywhere else. I'm doing good, but that just turns into the slippery slope. And then it's really hard to draw those lines in the sand and then the lines start to blur. And then before you know it, you're back in the same habits. But if you just create these things as habits, these are just part of your way of life. You stand firm with those things. You you 
budget for these things so that you can have the best foods, you will have the best outcome, you will have the best life possible just by sticking with those practices. Now, let's look at number seven. Number seven is anything that says it has added vitamins and minerals. So there's all kinds of foods, products out there that have added vitamins and minerals, this and that, vitamin C this, that, you know. Majority of those are synthetic vitamins and minerals. They also contain a high percentage of sugar and preservatives. And that really cancels out any benefit of any of those even synthetic vitamins or minerals you have in that food. So just be aware. I mean, there are all kinds of food tricks out there. There's all kinds of marketing gimmicks out there. There's, you know, stevia in the raw. It makes it think like it's stevia, but really there's malodextrin is the main component of that. And it's not stevia at all. Um, so, you know, get, Get to the source, understand where you're headed, understand what you're putting into your body. Some of the best practices for your family include things like farmer's markets. Make sure you go out and shop those farmer's markets. And you can't always go to those year round depending on where you live and your location around the world, but try to eat local. Try to understand where your food's coming from. Get to know those farmers, get to know those vendors. And, and they'll be honest with you because their reputation is too important as a small farmer, a small business owner like that. Uh, their reputation is everything. And so they're going to be honest with you uh, versus the manager at the big supermarket. They're not really going to know. Not that they're trying to be dishonest to you, but they really don't know. They're too far removed from the process. The thing you want to do, too, is you want to really be a label reader. Huge. Rule of five is to die by. Rule of five is question anything with more than five ingredients. That's why it's really important to shop around the borders of the grocery store because those are going to be the purest foods. Those are going to be the whole foods, meaning they're not diluted down with other products and other preservatives. So this is going to be your veggies, your meats, your you know certain dairy products if you can get those raw. But avoid avoid the aisles like the plague. Too dangerous in there. You get me in those aisles, man, game over. You get tempted by all those nice, pretty packages and colors and all the yummy food filled with sugar. It's like, oh, man, you just want to just put everything in your shopping cart. Bad idea. That is the quickest way to set you up for disaster, not success. And then I love to do the DIY stuff. So if you can make your own salad dressings, um, your own lunch meat, you know, it's by getting like a whole chicken, cutting that up, a whole turkey, cutting it up, freezing those meats um, so you can have those easy to pull out. Just make it as convenient as you can for your family. Creating snacks yourself like hummus or almond butter. Um, I love that stuff. You can put it on anything. You can make it healthy in the right way. Nothing's more disappointing to me than going to a grocery store looking for hummus and every single hummus in there has canola oil in it. I'm like, oh man, even if it's organic canola oil, I don't want it in my body. And it's really tough to find stuff with olive oil instead of canola oil. And so, man, you just, you just look for it or you, you make it yourself, right? When you can't find it, you make it yourself. Um, I love to do things like canning. So soups, chili, stews, veggies. Again, put those in the freezer, can those, do whatever you need to for your family to set yourself up for success. So, again, just to recap through those, any, avoid anything with Vitamins and minerals added. And it says naturally sweetened or sugar-free. Something that says no trans fats. Be wary. Um, and it even says organic. Really read the labels. Gluten-free is not a free-for-all to go eat whatever you want. Whole grains do not mean what they think you are or what they what you think they do. So really be aware. And then don't be fooled and automatically go for the fresh or natural or grass-fed or free-range. Really understand what that means. And just... Take away one or two of these things a day. Start to apply these in your next grocery, grocery adventure, and I guarantee you will start to improve the quality of your life just through the foods you are putting into your body as well. So remember, when you're going through this journey called life, you do not have to be perfect. You just need to be consistent. You need to just create new habits if you want to create a new outcome and a new result. So today, you can start to take some of these things, create some of those new habits, start to use that in your everyday life, and you will get new results. Just remember, your body needs no help healing, just no interference.
Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please help more people in reaching their fullest potential and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to newedgewellness.com.